What a good God we have. Praise the Lord. Now we can dismiss our kids uh, up to sixth grade today. Up to sixth grade today. I know it's July 4th weekend, and I know people have a lot planned today, so I promise I will not preach more than two hours, all right? So we will get you out of here on time, amen? God is so good. He's so faithful. Praise the Lord. I love that. To see the little ones. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Some people say, well, they're the church of tomorrow. Well, no, they're the church of today. They put life into a church. I don't, I've been to churches that, that don't have young people, and it just seems different when you have a bunch of young people around. Amen. God is good. Amen. He's faithful. And I want to wish you a happy July 4th weekend before we get started. And I I know that uh, this is a weekend where we uh, celebrate our freedom. Amen. And America is free. And I thank God. There's great prices that were paid for that. And we thank God for that today. And God has laid a series of messages on my heart that Actually, he laid this on my heart a year ago, and uh, it just was one of those that just wasn't uh, ready to be preached and ready to be taught or whatever, and God really began to speak to me uh, during our men's meetings and, and uh, about certain things, and as we were going through our men's groups and, and the ladies were having their ladies groups, each man that came up and presented something just added to what God was uh, filling me up with uh, in this series. This series, I'm calling it Fish Stories. Everybody heard fish stories before? Well, I'm calling this series Fish Stories, and and, uh, there's a reason for that, and we're going to get to that. But uh, I believe with all my heart that God has a whole lot of things that he wants to say uh, through his word and through the fish stories in the word of God. Amen. And so we're going to be looking at some of those over the next few weeks, and we're going to be looking at them in a way that I hope that it encourages you and it lifts you up and it gives you some ammunition. Amen. We need ammunition to fight. Uh, against the enemy. Amen. And we have everything we need right here, folks. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. We have everything we need in the word of God. Amen. Well, I've heard fish stories all of my life. And as I was sitting one night and Brian was uh, teaching his lesson and it was almost like a voice came to me and, and, and said, you know, the miracle isn't in the fish story. And the miracle's not in the fish. And as I begin to get all the fish stories that God began to lead me to over the next few weeks, I begin to see the power of the miracles in all of those stories. And God began to open up my eyes to so many miracles that happen inside of us and we don't even realize it. How many know you, you are a walking, talking miracle this morning? Amen. You have, God has moved on you and in you in ways that you don't even maybe sometimes realize, and you are a walking miracle on the inside. If you have given your life to Jesus Christ, guess what? That's the greatest miracle that can ever happen to us, amen? We are walking miracles. But today I want to share with you some things that God has laid on my heart, things that I want to bring out. And one of the things, it's amazing to me how fish stories are a part of our lives, Fish stories have been a part of my life, my entire life. Man, I, I, I've heard them. I, I can tell them. I can tell you some great fish stories. Amen. But they've been part of my life and part of our lives forever. They'll always be around. As I begin to read history and begin to read uh, how literature comes together, and I begin to really study this, and I thought, man, the sea, the ocean, the fish, the fishing, and all the things that uh, are in the sea. The, we could go back to the eons of time, and fish stories have been around. And I began to look at that, and I thought, man, anyone who's been fishing very long or knows someone who's a fisherman, they have heard some great fish stories. Amen? 
I, as some of you sitting here under the sound of my voice, and I know a few of you are, are avid fishermen, I know you have some stories to tell, amen? And, and they just are part of our lives, and, and, and I just love the fact that when we talk about fish stories, we're going to get into some really good ones that, that are in the Bible, and I can't wait to get there. I love fish stories, and uh, I have a lot of them to tell. I mean, I could tell a lot of them, the uh, stories that I've been with people that have caught fish. I've been with people. How many know the biggest fish story is the one you didn't catch, right? The one that got away, Amen. And I, I sit here today, and fish stories have been around for thousands of years and have even shaped our literature. Listen, has even shaped our literature and have had profound impact on movies, plays, documentaries, everything. It's, it, fish stories have impacted our lives in ways we never even think about. We can look at fish stories like Moby Dick. That is, that is and always will be a literary masterpiece, and it was written in the mid-1800s. It's a fish story that people took to, and man, it just kept getting repeated and repeated, and, and all of a sudden now it comes out. How many, how many know we've advanced now in the sharks? Come on now. Let me just mention one movie, Jaws. Amen. How many, have, how many saw Jaws 1? How many saw Jaws 20? <laughs> amen. Don't think that fish stories don't work and they don't hang around, amen. Fish stories, we're interested in that, and they work for us, and it's just something that's there all the time. And we, uh, we have, we've had so many fish stories about dolphins and and, and whales and free willy and, and if you're young enough, or I guess I should say if you're old enough, you'll remember Flipper. All right. Well, I'm reaching way back. And I'm thinking to myself, this is all fish stuff that we're so attracted, we're just attracted to it. It's just something that we want to attach ourselves to. And the stories can go on and on and on and on. And I want to go back to several fish stories that have been told for over 2,000 years. I want to get into some fish stories over the next few weeks that have been talked about, read about, preached about, studied about for over 2,000 years. The miracles of these fish stories aren't about what happened on the outside. When we read the stories, the miracles of Jesus and the fish and the things that he did, we automatically focus on the miracle of the physical thing that happened. But what we don't do sometimes and what we need to do is stop for a moment and look at the real miracles of these stories. The real miracles are what happened on the inside of the characters that were part of those fish stories. And that's what we're going to break down over the next few weeks. The miracles in these stories are what took place on the inside of the story, the guys in the story. And I want to break those down so that we can see with our own eyes and understand exactly what has happened inside of us. How many know we need to know sometimes what has really happened inside of me? Amen. When I got saved and now I'm growing and I'm learning and what is happening inside of me? Well, I have news for you. There's a miracle happening inside of us every day as God works with us and shows us things. Amen. We're going to talk about some of those things. Go with me, if you will, to Luke chapter 5. I know Vicki's happy about this. Luke is her favorite writer. Yeah. <laughs> Luke chapter 5. Very familiar story, but we're going to read it and we're going to break it down because I think it's important that we understand out of this story, what were the true miracles? Amen. Here we go. How many are there? Say amen. amen. So it was that the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. This is Jesus that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Okay, listen to this. And saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's or Peter's, and asked him to put out a little bit from the land. 
And he sat down and he taught the multitudes from the boat. Go with me now. Stay with me. Here he is. He's standing there. There's this group of people just thronging him, almost pushing him into the water to hear the word that he wants to, to give. So he sees two empty boats, and he calls for Simon or Peter and says, I'm going to get in the boat. Will you, will you push out a little bit so I can preach? Uh, and I don't know if you've ever been around water. This is one miracle that always gets missed. But Jesus had his own amphitheater. Have you ever been around water and you talk across water and you, it goes a long ways, amen? amen? Jesus knew exactly what his microphone would be, amen? He knew what PA system he had to use at that time. So he gets in the boat and they launch out a little bit to get away from shore. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Stay with me now. But Simon Peter answered and said to him, Master, let me, you want to say it the way I say it? No, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'll get back to that, okay? He said, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. What a miracle. Wow, what a miracle. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were there, uh, with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook, stay with me, when they brought their boats to land, they forsook all they had and followed him. We're going to talk about some miracles this morning, miracles that's happened inside of us and we don't even realize it. But I want you to understand this morning the power of the miracle. Now, if we read this story, and I've preached about this story so many times, and I always focus on the physical miracle of this story. I always focus on the power of God and how much power Jesus has and how much miracle working power Jesus used to get the attention of people. How many know that it, I'm, I'm going to say this because it's true, the real miracle here isn't the great haul of fish. Listen to me. How many know that a physical miracle to God is nothing? Come on. Do you think it was hard for Jesus to, to just say the words, hey, fish, get in the net? Come on. Every fish in that lake was, heard the words of Jesus and said, man, we got to go. We got to get in that net because Jesus called us to do it. It's not the miracle of the physical thing that happened, that great haul of fish. That is not the miracle. Jesus can do anything like that anytime he wants. Where the miracle comes in is when what happened inside of Peter. There's the miracle. The miracle is what took place inside of Peter. There is no greater miracle that can happen than the transformation of a heart. Listen to me. If God gets to our heart, it's a miracle. Come on. Some of you need to go back before you got saved. You need to go back and think of how your life was and how you were living and where you were living and how things were in your life and, and how much your life was in disarray or your life was unsatisfied. And, and, and you just, man, you just, the miracle was that God called you to him and he touched your heart and he began to transform you. That's a miracle. 
And today as I'm sitting here and standing here this morning and getting ready to break this down, the miracles that happened inside of the heart of uh, Peter is, a, is an amazing thing. A change of heart is a miracle. It takes a miracle to change me. Amen? I don't know about you, but uh, I can speak for myself. This old bullheaded uh, uh, person here, it takes a miracle to change me. My wife has tried to change me for 45 years. And she's changed some of me, amen. And she's sitting there thinking, boy, I'd sure like to change a whole bunch more, too. <laughs> Hence comes the miracle, amen. When we begin to look at our hearts, no one can change us. We are who we are. We decide what we want to be. Come on. I see heads going. It's so true, isn't it? It's the miracle of God getting to our hearts and changing us, Amen. transforming us. Man, what a miracle begins to take place when we get saved. And I want to talk about this right now because there are, there are four things here that we have to talk about. The four miracles that I see right off that jump off the page to me. Number one is Peter's faith to obey Jesus. His conversion. Peter saw that he needed Jesus. Peter saw that Jesus was who he was. And Peter decided, man, I, I, I need to change. How many know, remember the day you got saved? You had that feeling, man. You were drawn to that. And Jesus pulled you in and God pulled you in. And, and, and you knew that, that, that you just needed to trust him. I just need to have faith in him. I just need to believe in him. Peter had that transformation that started right there, Peter's faith to obey Jesus. Now go with me to the story. Don't just read it. Think about this. Here is Peter, a professional fisherman. How many is a professional at your job? There's few in here, I'm sure. A professional, you, you have the experience, man, you've done it, and, and you've done it over and over again. It's something you do every day. It's something that is part of your life. It's what you dream about. It's what you do. You're a professional. Peter is a professional fisherman. He has fished all night long. He's tired. He's worn out. He's done. Anybody ever went fishing and fished real hard and got skunked? not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling. So he's already in a bad mood. Come on. Go with me. Don't just read the story. He's in a bad mood. He's probably gotten an argument several times with his buddies. And they probably are saying, I told you shouldn't, we shouldn't have went out last night. Everybody know the told you guys or the told you people? After it's over, they're all with you and they're for you and they're doing everything with you. But when it's over, I told you you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Come on. I'm sure he heard some of that. I'm sure he was really stressed. I'm sure he was thinking, man, we got no food to put on the table tonight. I got nothing to take down to sell at the market. I got, this is a bad night. It's just been a bad night. And he's cleaning his, his nets and he's probably saying things he probably shouldn't be saying. Amen. Come on. And all of a sudden, Jesus looks over there and sees him and says, Hey, Peter, come on over here. Let's make your boat useful. Wow. So he gets in the boat and he goes out a little bit. And after he's done preaching, he has the nerve. Now remember, he's a carpenter. He ain't no fisherman. He's a carpenter. Has anybody in here ever had somebody come to you who does not know anything about what you do and try to tell you how to do it? You just want to slap them and look up at God and say, Lord, I don't know how that happened. 
here's a carpenter, and he says, hey, Peter, launch out and throw them nets out. In the heat of the day, come on, everything's wrong about it. Listen to me. Everything is wrong about what Jesus told Peter to do in the fishing realm. Okay? So don't tell me the fish was the miracle. The miracle was Peter in his heart saying, you know what? He's Jesus. I better do what he asked me to do. There's a miracle. Already started. Miracles working right there. So Peter launches out. Oh, guys, come on, go with me. Jason, I can just think of me and you and a couple of others when we went fishing in Canada. If we had something like this happen, we're headed out, and you could just hear the other guy saying, this is stupid. <laughs> and we're doing this, why? Because a carpenter is telling us how to fish? Who's he think he is? And then Peter said, hey, boys, be careful. He's God. We just need to do it. So they're all together now, man. They're giving each other the whatever. They're going out. They don't even know where they're going. He just says, go out into the deep and throw your nets out. And all of a sudden, they go out, and, and they're just obeying what, what Jesus had told him to do. Uh, everything that he's told them to do is not what they would. Uh, how many know God tells us to do things his way, and the miracle is sometimes we go ahead and do it even though it's way different than we would do it. Come on. There are things in my life where I do them because Jesus said to do them, and, and if I could have just a moment with him, I would say, Lord, I could do this better. Come on. Wow. But the miracle is inside of us, something says, just do what he says to do. That's a miracle. For us to go against all our feelings, to go against everything we've learned, to go against everything we've been taught, to go against what we do on a regular day, we go against that and we do what Jesus said to do. That's a miracle. So I see the first miracle as Peter does this and goes out and he begins to do it. And guess what happens when he does what Jesus tells him to do? He ends up with this great haul of fish. Can you imagine the excitement when they came in to shore with their nets completely full? Their boats are full. They're getting ready to sink. They have so many fish. Yes, that's a miracle, folks, but that's not the greatest miracle of the story. The second part and the second miracle that I want to talk about that happened inside of Peter that happens inside of us also is Peter finally sees Jesus for who he is. He didn't see a carpenter. Come on. He saw Jesus for who he really was. Yes, the miracle is what hooked Peter. Come on. That's a pun. The fish haul was what Jesus used to hook him and haul him in and get him into the presence. But let me tell you something. He realized who Jesus was. The miracle in Peter was that he saw Jesus and he knew now he truly is the son of God. Peter got that revelation and that revelation miracle. I say this all the time. The revelation of who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for you will change your heart and change your life completely. If you ever realize and get the revelation of who Jesus Christ is, what he did for you and I at Calvary, how he died on the cross for us, how he went into the grave and he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he went into heaven and he's seated at the right hand of the Father and he finished all all the work that need to be done, and he gave us the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. If we ever get the revelation of that and realize who Jesus Christ really is to us, we will have a miracle spring forth inside of us. We will see who he is. It's important that we see who Jesus is in our lives. 
It's important that we follow our hearts when our heart is telling us, man, this is Jesus. He's speaking to me. He's calling me. Some of us in this place today, he's calling you to ministry. He's calling you to different things. And you need to heed that because a miracle is birthing inside of you. Peter saw that. It changed him. Can you imagine this burly fisherman who probably had some language that was pretty rough? Come on. Lord, have mercy. I can only imagine how rough Peter was and the miracle that took place in his heart when he saw Jesus for who he was. He couldn't wait to get to Jesus, to kneel at his feet and make sure Jesus knew, I know who you are, Lord. How many know he called him Lord? What that means, you are Lord, you are God, you are the King of Kings, you are, you've been sent here to save us, you're my Savior, you're, 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 you're my healer, you're my provider, you're everything for me, I see who you are now. When that miracle takes place inside of our heart and we begin to transform in our heart and realize who Jesus really is to us, man, that's a miracle. The third thing I want to do is show you where Peter was. Peter saw himself. He saw who he really was. You know, I think this is a problem today, and I'm going to share this because I do. I counsel a lot of people. I think there's a lot of people walking around who don't really see who they are without God. There's a lot of people who don't realize until that miracle happens inside of them that they cannot do this life without Jesus. They cannot make it through this life without Jesus. They don't really look within themselves and see who they really are. Peter fell down and saw how bad he really was. Peter saw how great Jesus was and how small and how, uh, 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 how much he needed a God because he was so bad. See, if we would understand this about ourselves, and I'm not saying to demote yourself or, or get depressed and, and, and sit around and talk about how bad you are. That's not what I'm talking about. I, wanna, I want us to remember this. We are not very good without Christ living in us. Come on. Sometimes we let Jesus leave us for a minute so we can do what we want to do. Uh-oh. Sometimes when I'm raged with anger, come on, the real me shows up. Come on, might as well be honest. Sometimes when, 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 but let me tell you this, the miracle is that we know and we see who we really are and what we can be without Jesus. That's the miracle. I see that. I need him. I need him in my heart. I need him sitting in that seat next to me. I need him when I'm out in public. And I need him when I'm in Walmart. I definitely need him when I'm in Walmart. Amen. You see all kinds of things in Walmart, and you see things that you didn't know you'd ever see in Walmart. Amen. But the miracle is that I have Jesus with me and I realize who Jesus is and I realize who I am without him. Peter had a great miracle that day, man, when he realized who he really was without Jesus. He said, I'm not even worthy. He asked Jesus to get away from him. Do you hear what I'm saying? He saw how bad he was and how wonderful Jesus was. And Jesus, you don't want anything to do with me. I'm so bad. Don't tell me that's not a miracle that he saw who he really was. I don't know about you, but it happened to me one day. I saw how bad I really was. I saw how much I needed Jesus in my life. I saw... Man, I, if I don't get Jesus in my life, this thing's going to get worse and worse and worse. And the miracle took place inside of me. 
The last thing I want to leave with you is this last one here, this miracle that I see that is, is one of the greatest miracles that happened to Peter because it set uh, the pace for the rest of his life. And, and we talked about it. We're going to really talk about it now. Peter's willingness to give everything to Jesus. You talk about a miracle. Man, here's a guy who was completely his own man. Had his own thing going on, had his own fishing boat, had his own business, had everything going on. Now, I, I, I'm not telling everybody to, to give up your business. Please stay with me this morning, all right? But Peter saw this, and he had a miracle inside of him that said, I'm going to leave everything I have and follow Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but it would take a miracle, come on, for us to get just walk away from our businesses, to just walk away from our jobs, to just walk away from our families and walk away from our homes. It would take a great miracle for us to do that and go out and do what God has called us to do. Peter said, I'm leaving everything. I'm leaving my boat. I'm leaving my family, I'm leaving everything that I got, I'm leaving it all, and I'm going to follow him. You're talking about a miracle. My friend, let me tell you something. When we begin to set things aside for Jesus, when we begin to make Jesus first in our lives, when we begin to uh, have, have things that, that, that are out there that we spend a lot of time on, we begin to say, hey, I need to shove that off to the side. Jesus needs more time in my life. When we begin to do those kind of things, that's when the miracle is starting to happen inside of us. Our heart is changing. See, sometimes we don't see this. We don't realize what Peter did, what he walked away from, what he gave up to follow Jesus. He followed him because of the miracle that happened inside of him. It's not because of the great haul of fish. That was what Jesus used to get his attention. But the great miracles happened inside of him. Now you got this Peter, this guy. Oh, Lord, let's talk about Peter for a moment. Man, this guy, the only time he opened his mouth was to change feet. He was always in trouble. He's the only one I know that was close to Jesus, and Jesus looked at him and said, Get behind me, Satan. Let me tell you something. If you ain't ever had your feelings hurt, boy, that would really hurt your feelings. If you were a follower of Jesus and you walked up to him and Jesus looked at you and said, get behind me, Satan. Come on. This is a guy who constantly had problems, man. He was human. I, I, I can see myself in Peter so many ways and so many times. I'm sure you can too. But as he kept going and he kept following Jesus and he gave up everything that he had, the miracle just kept happening inside of Peter. Miracle after miracle began to happen inside of him. His heart began to transform. And he's even the one that denied Christ three times. Man, that could have been the end of Peter. That could have done it. That could have been the very thing that crushed his heart and stopped the miracle from happening inside of him. He could have walked away from that situation and said, man, I'm just really, I am really nothing. But guess what Jesus did? On the day that he arose, he came back, and if you'll read it in one of the Gospels, it says this. Go and tell my disciples and Peter. Come on, it's there. Go and tell my disciples and make sure you tell Peter that I'm back and everything's going to be okay. Man, you're talking about a miracle inside of Peter. It happened over and over and over again. And the miracles aren't what happened in the physical around Jesus. The miracles were what happened inside of his heart as his heart began to transform and change. You're in here today, my friend. Let me tell you, our hearts have a lot of transforming to do. Amen? Our hearts have a lot of changing to do. But the miracle is inside of us, and it's happening every time we turn around. God is changing our heart in some way. 
and the miracle is alive inside of us. Yes, I did some stuff yesterday I wish I could take back. Come on. But guess what? I can't. So guess what? I have to lean on the miracle inside of me that says, keep going forward. I'll change your heart. Keep moving forward. I'll change your heart. And once our heart gets in that place, man, once we have faith to obey Jesus, once we see who Jesus is, once we see who we are without Jesus, let me tell you something, we'll be more willing to give up things in this life and serve God even more. That's the miracle of this story is what happened to Peter on the inside and what's happening to us on the inside. What a miracle. I wouldn't even try to change you. Lord, have mercy. If you came to me and told me everything that's wrong with you, I would probably say, back up. I'm not getting in that. I'll pray for you, but I ain't getting in that. Amen. But Jesus said, bring it to me. Because what I'm going to do is create a miracle inside of you and inside your heart, I'm going to begin to change you. How many know Jesus can change you? How many in here can say he changed me? Amen. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. He changed me. I'm not what I used to be, and thank God I'm not what I'm going to be yet, amen? Because the transformation is happening. Man, the miracle of change is happening. The miracle of changing my heart is still continuing. And man, every time I stub my toe, every time I fail, every time I slip up, every time I do something wrong, I can go back to Jesus, and Jesus will say to me, hang in there, I'm changing your heart. The miracle's still alive. You may be in this place today and you may be sitting here and you're wondering, man, I sure would like to have the same change Peter had. Well, just hang in there. Keep going to him because it's going to happen. Amen. You keep trusting God and you keep seeing who Jesus is to you and you keep uh, looking within yourself and saying, I can't do this without God. I'm going to tell you right now, he will be there and he'll, you'll see a change in your life. It'll happen. I look back at what I used to be and how I used to do things and I look at how I am today and I see a change. I see a transformation. I see the miracle of a changed heart. As a pastor, I look out at congregation members and, and I see them and I've watched them and I've seen them grow and I've watched them go from this to this and I've seen the change in their hearts, the miracle of the transformed heart. I see it. So today I'm going to ask this question. The greatest miracle is when you got saved, but the second greatest miracle that we need to understand is the transformation, the changing of our heart. It's an ongoing thing. And you're here today, you may be sitting in defeat. You may be sitting here and say, man, I'm, I'm just, man, I've done some things here lately or I'm not where I should be. I want you to set that stuff aside and I want you to remember this. The miracle is still inside of you and God is working on you. He is going to change your heart. He's going to make you exactly what he designed you to be. And that's the miracle. That's the miracle. The only thing God asks from us you know, he could ask a lot from us. All he asks is for our heart. Give me your heart. I'll transform it. I'll change it. Once our hearts are changed and transformed, we start to act and look and talk like Jesus. Peter began to start after Jesus left and the Holy Spirit came. Peter began to talk, act. Everything was like Jesus. Peter wasn't even the same guy because of the miracle of the changed heart, the transformation that took place. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. How many by the uplifted hand in here today, today will say, Pastor, I, I know he's changing me, but I need more change in my life. Come on, amen, all over the place. We all should have our hand up on that one. Let's just come to the altar and pray as a church family as we close today.